Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it's going to be a fun stream today, Mr. Jake decided. I haven't made a video about it today yet, but did you see the uh, McKenzie, uh, the headline thing uh, that's in that poster? Yeah, kind of giving us some confirmation as to what the heck's going on in this opening, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so, some, some good stuff. Do we think that, like, the rumor, the going rumor for, like, months has been, uh, has been the whole... Um, you know, uh, Liv McKenzie's sister is yeah. uh, Samara Weaving's character. <clears throat> is that confirmation? Do you? Th what do you think? Do you think that that's like our confirmation that that's the direction they're going to go? That very well could be it. I I'm like, I don't hate the idea. It's not like the worst thing ever. Uh, <laughs> I don't think everything needs to connect. You know, that's you guys know my. I think you know my opinion on that. But um, um, yeah, if they want to do that, cool. I'm I'm here for it. I do want to say hi to a few people in the chat just real quick though. Uh, what's up, Cody Ghostface? How's it going? First, love it. Bye bye Polar's here too, saying hey, howdy, hey. What's up? What's up? Happy hey, Friday. What's up? Jordy is here too. What's up? What's up? Uh, Wayne Turner saying it's 10:04 a.m. here on Saturday. Oh, already starting a Saturday over Man, in Australia. Man, Man of, of the future. future. Everyone knows Australians can time travel, so that's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Uh, what if uh, Sam is a ghost face, but she has no clue she's one? That would be pretty wild, Cody. I, we, I, you, I, you, are we? We get in that. We get in that next because keep it in segments. Uh, I do want to. I do want to finish this thought because I, I yeah. have some. I have a lot to say. I just want to say hi to a few people. Yeah, of course. First, of course. Of course. Uh, Carrie well, is here uh, too. Saying, who are these two jokers? <laughs> Well, we're I, twinsies. We are. We're twinsies. We both got our scream shirts. We're both white. We both wear glasses. And we both have hats. I mean, come on, America. <laughs> America. Oh my God. How are um, you canceled? <laughs> yeah. Bad. Done. <laughs> Done. Uh, Night Owl is here. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Welcome, welcome. Edge Brown is saying, I think Samara is being pushed so hard as the opening. I think she's Ghostface. I really think she's the opening, man. I, I think it's as straightforward as it is. <laughs> I know. I want her to be Ghostface. I really do. But I really think she's, uh, yeah, I really think she's our opening kill here. Nathan Mills is saying, yo, 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 what's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome. <laughs> Brandon Sears saying, would you guys like the idea of a Scream film being in the style of Wes Craven's new Nightmare? Yes. I say yes. I wouldn't mind it. Depends on how it's done, though. But right. Right, it all depends on that for sure. Jonathan Brake, Richard Brake's nephew, is here. Hello. <laughs> totally kidding. Lisa is here saying hi, everyone. It's another exciting night at the grocery store. Yeah. I just came <laughs> back from the grocery store. Nice. Oh yeah, a little grocery adventures. And I got and I got me some taquero Taco Bell. <laughs> nice man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Nothing's better than Taco Bell. Taco Taco Bell is heaven. Dude, it's it used to be so cheap, and you know, uh, it's still pretty cheap though. <laughs> so that's I'll go I bankrupt. I, I would go bankrupt over Taco Bell. I keep their lights on. <laughs> <laughs> you keep their the light nice. Yeah, nice man. I do. I do. Uh, Austin, Austin is here saying we'll be able to catch the start of your stream. Is it just you two today? Yes, it is. It is just us today. We're holding down just the fort. The two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. We'd probably start just smooching. The two of us. <laughs> oh, if he was here, we'd definitely be making out. <laughs> yeah, I mean for sure. Yeah, without somebody's somebody's got to make money around here. Someone's got yeah. Someone's got to make the money. Listen, someone's got to <laughs> put food on the table. Uh, D Dolo is saying, "How do you guys feel about the 3D aspects?" Uh, Fade, how do you feel about it? Are you excited for that? I mean, it's a fun little gimmick. Will I watch it in 3D? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch the actual movie. Maybe yeah. after like I've seen, maybe after I've seen it a couple times, maybe I'll watch it just to check it out. But I think it's more of just like a gimmick thing. I think most people will watch it regularly. I hope this movie isn't filmed for 3D though. Oh God, no, no, it can't. I really it hope can't it's not be. because that sucks. Yeah, when, it, when like every if, you, if you've ever watched like a like a 3D movie and yeah, and it's like yeah, and it's just not. And it, it's just like everything just looks off because they're trying to make it look 3D, but you're not watching in 3D. I really hope that's not the case. Yeah, same. I, I totally agree. It, this feels like a last minute, like, hey, let's do this thing. You know, that might be fun in 3D. So I, I hope that's <laughs> oddly. I hope that's the case, you know? Yeah. I hope it's just a gimmick. Um, that's my hope, or at least. But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Great question. Yeah. 
good stuff good, good stuff though maverick media is also here yo 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 what's up what welcome Denise is here too what's up what's up uh and an another austin saying could the killer be vince since the uh mckenzie McKen family being targeted uh live mckenzie from scream 5. okay so yeah we're let's let's just yeah, let's, let's it. dive into it let's dive big into collective it. hello to everyone who's just coming in by the way we'll be responding to some more comments but we do want to get a few things out of the way some new things coming up so fate let's continue that conversation we were just having a minute ago though yes let's uh let's let us um so i think i think the idea of like you know, Liv McKenzie, because that, because again, that was something that was rumored and reported since like the announcement of Samara yeah. Weaving. Uh, and it wasn't even that like, it wasn't, the rumors didn't start because somebody would like leak some information. It was just, there was a lot of people that were like, they look very similar. So what if she's that? And then that just kind of developed into its own thing. And this like snowball effect happened. And here we are. And now we get this poster today and attached to the poster is this like, uh, like news headline and it says you know uh McK was a mckenzie family murder or something like that yeah yeah so a couple things to that one you could go you could go the route of like samara weaving is liv's uh sister and that's why she doesn't have a last name it's just laura maybe it's laura mm -hmm. mckenzie uh the other way i see that going is that like because it says family murder um do, are the McKenzie's is that like a report from when like Liv and maybe her family got killed too in that process because it doesn't say you know sister of you know Liv or something like that or you know it says family murdered although they may be lumping those two together the other alternative which I actually think could make a lot of sense um I know uh what how you say her name Liana Liberato uh, Liana or something yeah Liana something like that um close enough uh rumors are that that's Dermot Maroney's daughter what if it's not what if it's what if it is Samara Weaving and Liv we've never we never got to see Liv's dad right like we never yeah. saw and we we've never seen the McKenzie's like in, in Scream 96 you saw them say oh go to the McKenzie's and you know get get some help run on run on down to the McKenzie's but like so what if like Dermot Maroney is like the the dad or the uncle or something like that to to the McKenzie's and because I mean we know uh, Dermot Maroney said the reason I get involved my character gets involved is because my you know my daughter was killed well that could be Samara Weaving or it could be or it could be um, Liv. I, I will say we do know that Quinn uh, Liana Liberato's character shares a last name with Dermot yeah. Mulroney so I, I yeah. we do know that. Uh, but that that could be a possibility as well. I I could see that being the case because like me right now, how I how I have it in my mind is that like maybe it's gonna be Samara weaving as our opening kill. But the thing about it is it says family. That's the thing that's yeah. perplexing me. It's like what yeah. what is the family element to this? Like is it because if if it's just another member of the McKenzie family getting murdered here, like let's say Samara is Liv's sister. That's not the whole family dying. You know what I mean? That's like yeah. what different murder cases years apart. So I'm, it, I feel like there's more to this opening scene than we think, even if we have guest who are the the main actress is in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, um, I definitely could see, cause yeah, that, that's the only thing that throws me off too, is the whole like family, family. Family. Got, I got family. This is this is actually going to be Fast and Furious 10. That's what y'all yeah, don't that's know. A, that's <laughs> that's a, family. Uh, but no, I mean, in, in reality, like, that's the thing that throws me off too is the whole family thing. Cause, like, yeah, I mean, you're right. Yeah. Like, okay, Liv died a year ago. And now you have, let's say, Samara Weaving's character, Laura. She dies in the opening. Okay. That's not like the family. Like, I could understand if it said, like, sisters, you know, sisters killed. And Ghostface, you know, spree over a year or whatever, like something like that. Okay, cool, that makes sense. Like, I get it. But this, it's, it's. I don't know. It's just a little odd. Like the family aspect kind of makes me go, huh? Like it's perplexing. Perplexing. I no, I totally agree. And Austin brings up a good point here too, saying the McKenzies were like uh, linked to the the Beckers in the original Scream, nineteen ninety six. Yes, they were the neighbors. They referenced the um, the Becker like parents. They referenced them in the opening scene of the original Scream. 
from 1996. And it, yeah, there's no confirmation that Liv McKenzie is part of that same clan. I feel like it's more just like, yeah, uh, yeah sure, she is. She's you know the McKenzie. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So do you do you think that's, could we be meeting the rest of the family in this opening scene? Is that maybe yeah, the thing that we don't know yet? I mean, that could be, that could be so. I'm, well, so I, again, and we don't know this for sure, but according to viewer Anon, Samara Weaving's character is a professor. So what if she's getting, or it says that she makes her, he, the way he phrased it is like, uh, she make, uh, I can't tell you much, but she makes her money uh, as a professor, as a college professor in like film theory or something. Um, hmm. So clearly there's something, like if that's true, something gets established with her. It's not going to be just like phone rings, she's there, she dies, right? And so it's got to be like, there's got to be context throughout that scene to, to where we'll know okay, she's a professor, okay, so there's that, so, like, maybe it's something, like, that, like, the alleyway, who's, like, we're going on the assumption that it's an apartment alleyway, because it looks like that, what if it's the alleyway to, like, a theater, or something, because she is in that dress, right, so, like, yeah. what if she's getting, like, what if the movie starts, and she's getting, like, an award as a film professor, or something, or she's teaching this class, and her family's there, right, and she goes outside, to go, you know, she gets a phone call or something, goes outside to go check. She ends up getting killed. The family's looking for her, and then they end up getting killed. Like, that could be got to go. Like, what if the opening scene oh. is like, what if the opening scene is like five deaths, and it's just like the McKenzie family? Oh, just a massive, <laughs> what a great way to, massacre. what a great, yeah, massacre right at the beginning. Great tone setter for what's yeah. feeling like dark scream, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, dude. Ooh, I am. I'm feeling that because, you know, man, I, I love when an opening scene can put you in a, an immediate, like terrified position. Like the first time I saw it, 2017 terrified me right out the gate. Like the opening scene to that is fucking terrifying. <laughs> it's it's so well done. It's so well crafted. If we can do something like that here in screen in Scream 6, anything you and anything that comes after that, I'm going to be immediately a little more jumpy. You know what I mean? If you're going to terrify me in the first 10 minutes. So, well, that's I would, the yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say is that I, I would, I mean, the whole point of the opening scene is to set the tone, establish the film, give you an idea. Like every screen movie has done that. And the thing is, too, is like this screen movie looks like it's going to be, I don't know if this, this screen movie is going to be so like cut and dry opening scene, right? Like, like usually the opening scene is like, it's almost like its own entity away from the movie. You know, you have, like, the opening scene establishment, like, for the most part. The Terra one, that one tied more into the movie. But, like, think of all the other ones. Like, Cotton, his cut, his, his scene was kind of cut and dry. Um, you know, he was, yeah, it tied into, like, Roman looking for Sydney, But, like, there was no significance in Cotton's death. Uh, you know, Scream 4, you have the two girls. I don't remember their names off the top of my head. Which is why I don't like <laughs> Scream 4, because I don't remember. Because it just, they were, they were pointless. Like, it's just like one of the girls was the one that slept with Trevor. Like, that was the only tie-in and connection to that. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a little... Yeah. yeah, that was cut and dry. Uh, Scream 2, you had, you know, uh, Phil and uh, Marines uh, in, in that as uh, Omar Epps and uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. They Their scene was very cut and dry. And, but I mean, and their tie-in, yes, was like their names, right, when Gail's trying to figure it out. But again kind of this cut and dry scene and then 96 same thing casey becker you do find out that she dated Stu, but again it's its own thing like every screen movie has been its own like the opening scene yes it establishes it sets the tone of the film but it is its own thing i kind of feel like scream based on like what like radio silence said what the rumors are that this is going to kind of be like its own thing like i don't know how cut and dry it's going to be i do think we get like the cuddle the the title card you know where Ghostface like goes to kill somebody and then it cuts away. Like I do think we get that, but I don't think it's gonna be. It might not be one of those things where it's that and then it immediately jumps to like Sydney at a computer or like you know Sam like at the bowling alley sitting down. Like you know like every screen movie does. I think it might yeah. just be like, you know, this person dies, title card, and then like it just continues and picks up and like oh. the, and the and like the fire department or the uh, the 
police yeah because are... we usually get like a break in the action we introduce yeah. the characters we don't really Instead, have to do that it's... as much this time because like yeah. our, our main characters are familiar you know what i mean they're coming yeah. back from the last movie uh we gotta say you know we gotta talk about some of the new characters so maybe we have a scene where everyone comes in and kind of talks and there's this moment of, of peace before the the big storm but nothing like what we've gotten in the past where there's like a good 20 minutes of exposition and uh chilling out you know with these characters different scenes setting up things for uh the future i think yeah i feel like we are going to get right into it here because they've been teasing this faster pace i could see and they said like most of it takes place on one night which mm -hmm. is insane i'm like what is this movie about so that's to what be? i'm saying i'm so if excited that happens if that happens there can't be much downtime because it all yeah. happens one night so that means that means the opening scene happens and within x amount of hours in the night which is going to be you know minutes in the film Sam and Tara are going to find out about Ghostface back and they're going to end up fighting. Like the only thing that I could maybe see happening is like, I could see them maybe having the, the cut, right. Um, you know, the ghost face slash. And then I could see the movie picking up with Sam talking to the therapist. That that makes sense. That could be our first scene, and then yeah. it kind of gets going from and there. Then, and then it yeah. gets going. She comes out of yeah. the therapy place. She meets up with Tara. Her and Tara are walking, and then they see the the police sirens and everything, which we got a photo of. They walk up like, "What is going on?" They see the body bag, and they know Ghostface is there. And it's just bam, 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 bam. You get this like two minute scene after the opening scene death. You get this two minute scene where. You know, Sam's sitting there talking to her therapist. And she's like, I have this darkness in me and it's followed me here and blah, 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 blah. And kind of foreshadowing that Ghostface is back. She doesn't know it yet, but it foreshadowing that. And then boom, she comes back, she gets there and it's like, oh, no, I was right. It did follow me. <laughs> and I'm fine with that because like then we're now we're just getting right into mm -hmm. the story I mean, because I don't think we, we don't need to spend this whole because like I, I've seen people say things like, oh, you know, we got to have a scene where they're leaving Woodsboro and packing up for college. No, we don't. You know, we can. There, there's a lot of things we can skip and just get right into the action. I'm glad yeah. we're doing that because I'm much more interested in seeing like really cool New York set pieces, chase scenes through the subway and through uh, different apartment buildings and stuff, high rise buildings. It seems like we're that's what the majority of the movie is and i'm glad it's focused and not so like oh we got to show all this all these things are these things are happening for our characters too many requels like to like just keep telling the story and like some you don't need to start your story right where it starts you can start it a little more into it so that we're just seeing the interesting parts if that makes sense <laughs>